Hi, I'm Allison, the crocheter. And I'm Vivian, the knitter. And you're listening to Keep Calm and Carry Yarn. Hello, and welcome to episode 16 of Keep Calm and Carry Yarn. This is a crocheting and knitting podcast hosted by me and my mom, Vivian. I'm recording from my home here in Edinburgh. And I'm recording from my home here in New Hampshire. Thanks so much for joining us. Um, special thanks to all you returning listeners. And also a special thanks for any newest listeners. Um, this is our, I guess it's like our Christmas episode. Our kind holiday. Of. We're only doing one our holiday, holiday episode. Holiday episode. Yes. So we're just doing one this month because, I don't know about you, but it's crazy. I'm crazy busy. Yes. This, yeah. A little crazy. Not as crazy it was as it was when you guys were little, but still on the crazy side. Mm. Yeah, Christmas for you, I guess. Well, I feel like out of practice. I feel like even though we're only doing this a few days later than we normally would have, I feel like it's been ages. Um, it's been well. I mean, it's more than two weeks, so it's kind of like ages. Mm. Right. So let's jump into our BuzzFeed quiz, and it's can you translate the Scots version of Harry Potter? <laughs> Why did you pick this? Well, I picked it because well, it's it's not our usual personality quiz, but I actually bought the Scots edition of Harry Potter last week, a couple weeks ago, uh-huh. and this came out the end of November. It's published by Ichiku, which is an indie publisher, and they do other like Scots edition of other books. But yeah, and also I live in Scotland, so it's funny. I'm not, I, when, I, when I saw it, I was like, yep, I have to have that. Yeah, I'm surprised it's taken so long for them to uh, get a Scots edition. I mean, it's been but a why? long time. Pe- yeah, but, know. you know, it's the sort of thing where I feel it's, it's like a novelty item. It's yeah. like publishing the Latin version or like ancient Greek or something. <laughs> I'm sure there's an ancient Greek version. Maybe it's just some there's definitely a latin version yeah i don't know in case for our american listeners if you don't know scots is a sort of version of english it broke off from english what we're speaking now during the middle english phase so like old english middle english and then like modern english Uh so during middle english scots sort of that's it became its own went in its own direction Uh and then english english is, what we is have it considered now. So like a dialect, or is it actual? Would it be considered an actual language? No, I, I, I don't know if there's a definite answer to that. I think some people might consider it to be a dialect, but I think it's it is a sort of its own language. And then the other thing that's obviously different than Scottish Gaelic, mm-hmm. Scottish Gaelic. Um, so I got a ten out of ten. You did. <laughs> Are you such a nerd? <laughs> <laughs> what did you get? I got a six out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> what does your description say? Oh God! Oh God! Are you okay. gonna read it in Scots? <laughs> <laughs> um, it says, "Well done, you stoner. <laughs> you can plenty of Scots word, and you and you clearly can Harry Potter too. Get yourself a pat on the back." <laughs> Actually, it should have been seven out, seven out of ten. I hit the wrong button at one point, but whatever. Six uh-huh. out of ten. It says, nay bad. He clearly can a wee bit of, bit of Scots. <laughs> he can Harry Potter a naw. Geed work. Geed, geed, geed work. <laughs> you did. Oh, God. <laughs> so, I mean, a lot of it was just mm. guessing. Mm. Right. So which ones? You know, we're, we just go through them all just because it's <laughs> there's only 10 questions so the first one was bism ball i i picked bobat bobatons bobaton uh-huh. that was quidditch. quidditch i'm sure because i read the art i read an article about the book beforehand uh-huh. it talked about like bism ball was definitely one of the things that was mentioned in the article uh-huh. but one of the things is ball is definitely ball they did define explain, explain that so that's how mm. I was able to get Bism, some other balls. Balls, ball. uh, yeah, ones, right. I see. But in like the tourist shops, boxers you can buy boxers, uh-huh. and like the the band, the waistband says something about balls <laughs> because they're boxers. <laughs> so I, I don't remember what, exactly what. It was. Anyways, okay. The next one was pretty easy. That was heckle peck. I picked hippogriff. Really? Oh yeah. no, it's it's Hufflepuff. Uh-huh. Cause it's got the the heckle 
H and so the P. I just went in, 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 in. And it says peck in Scots means to breathe quickly. Is it peck uh, or pesh? Pesh. Pesh. Oh, well, maybe. I, I don't know. <laughs> I got the next one right. Hog, hoggy haw? Hogs need. Yeah. Dumby Dykes. That's Dumbledore. I got one. That's Dumbledore. And it explains that it's an area in Edinburgh. I don't think it's a nice area, though. Well, I'm I don't sure understand one... why why that's Dumbledore, but okay. Yeah, I don't know. Corby Kluk? <laughs> Corby Kluk. That one I just guessed, definitely. But it's, it's Ravenclaw. I thought Kluk sounds like Claw, so that's how I mm. picked it. And then Hulit? <laughs> it has to be an owl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like the the explanation because they go who who. <laughs> uh, Midden min, Minden ball because it's a ball, right? so I picked that mm. one. I wonder if it's Minden or Minden. Minden, min, I don't know. Minden, my Mind, as it literally, in like, literally means mind in. Ball. Yeah, oh, mind in. Ball. And then Carlin, Carleen Craft. That was witchcraft. Witchcraft. Scalper. That one, I guess. Uh, That's a beater. beater. Yep. Can trips. Can trips. I got that one wrong. I got that was spells. I picked C a n t r i p s. Spells. Mm -hmm. No, no. The answer was spells. Yes, yes, yes. I just realized <laughs> that's what you said. <laughs> what did you? I picked newts. Really? I don't know, cause I don't know, cause if you're Kenny, you're smart. And... Yeah, but. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Sam's dad picked the book up a couple of times this past weekend, which is like, it's like one look at it, like a few sentences. and was just like, oh, I can't read that. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'll, g I'll give you a little um, you can taster. <laughs> this is the first few lines of The Keeper O oh, the Keys. Doof, they chapped again. Dudley walked with, <laughs> with dirt. Where's Mons Meg? He said, glickedly. <laughs> There was a crash in it, a a <laughs> crash. I hint them and I hint them, and Uncle Vernon came skit, skittering into the room. <laughs> he was holding a rifle in his hands. Knew they can't been in the lang thin parcel he had brooked with them. <laughs> anyway, I'm get somebody uh, Scottish to read it. Oh uh, yeah. Oh, speaking of. Well, obviously, I work with a lot of Scottish people, but apparently if an American says space ghetto, space ghetto, space ghetto, space ghetto, it sounds like Spice Girls <laughs> Scottish accent. Space ghetto. Space ghetto. <laughs> okay. Space ghetto. Yeah. Cool. So my coworkers get a hoot out of that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, do they make fun of your Americanisms? No. There's definitely, like, some words that they're like, oh, it just sounds better when you say it. When they say it. I can't, can't. No, when I say it. Oh. Um, particularly words that they wouldn't normally use, like Americanisms. Mm -hmm. Definitely the other day, I was wearing my tartany check plaid pants, black and white ones, and one of the girls walked by and was like, I like your pants. And it took me sound like, hmm, I think she translated that for me. Normally she'd say trousers. <laughs> anyway. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. Can't see your underwear. <laughs> Do you have any whips? Yes. So last episode, I was working on the Creasel Fingerless Gloves mm -hmm. by Sybil R. And I finished one. Woohoo! Look at that. Oh, that's beautiful. I was moaning last time because I just couldn't get, get the, the numbers, numbers right. the count uh -huh. right. And so after that, I was just like, screw it. And I stopped counting. <laughs> I do have all my notes, so I can uh -huh. like basically try to do what I did again for the second one. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's it's an interesting pattern because it's like I said, it's it's sort of a bit of a pattern recipe. Uh -huh. So even the parts where she said to do so many rows at the end uh -huh. or towards the end, I didn't follow that because it just wasn't working out straight for me because uh -huh. it's sort of done in one two three four parts you do it's a free pattern mm -hmm. you do the thumb as like a rectangle and then you sew it together so you've got a tube mm -hmm. and then you start making circles around the tube on one end around the tube circle circle circles like and then at one point at some point when it's as long as you like it goes as far along up your fingers as you want it to go you stop doing full circles and you you just do partial circles mm -hmm. so that 
you know, it stops. Well, I wonder if how easy it would be to convert that into a regular mitten pattern. Because that would look really nice as a mitten pattern, like as a regular mitten. Oh, as, mm-hmm. a, as a knit pattern. Not uh-huh. a knit pattern, a mitten. Full mitten. Mitten. Oh, oh, oh. Huh. I don't know. You probably have to do some sort of other... Something up there by the tips of the fingers. Yeah. By the tips of your fingers, yeah, because the circle would just get mm-hmm. out of hand. But yeah, then once you do that, you then <laughs> fold the circle in half, crochet it together, and then you have to do like mm-hmm. a sort of wedge, the little triangle part. And then once you've done the wedge, you do the cuff mm-hmm. a few times, like just around regularly but i don't know yeah it's a strange pattern and the only thing is the actual finger like the hand hole mm-hmm. no the finger holes it's not very stretchy because of how it's made so i wasn't really sure how big to make it i mean none of none of it's really stretchy even like uh-huh. getting it through the wrist well isn't that just the nature of crocheting though it's not very stretchy to begin with well not necessarily i mean it's more stretchy mm-hmm. in one direction than the other but the fact that like just mm-hmm. i don't know well it looks it looks it's very just, stretchy just, and, yeah. and- yeah, it really shows off the self-striping yarn. Mm. Right? It's good. I like it. Yeah. So that is a whip. And then I have another whip, which I'm not going to finish it on time for Christmas, basically. It's just for myself. So I found a filet mm-hmm. crochet, like an antique mm-hmm. pattern on Ravelry just for, for letters. Mm-hmm. So rather than doing it, as filet oh, crochet. so you're making I'm bunting doing it as a tapestry crochet. Yeah, so I'm making bunting, and I've got the first one done. I've th- I did that in one. So you decided sitting. to do Merry Christmas. Yeah, but I think I'm gonna do Merry and Bright because oh. <laughs> it's slightly <laughs> less letters. <laughs> Christmas. <laughs> yeah, and if I don't actually finish it for Christmas, I can just keep it uh-huh. up, and it just says Merry and Bright. <laughs> it's not in like particularly Merry and Bright colors. Because it's in this sort of like... Green. It looks like a sagey green. Yeah, it's kind of like a sagey green, but a bit... Is there bamboo in it or something? Or No, it's just acrylic. Yeah, it looks kind of shiny. Yeah, it's got a bit of a sheen to it. So the background is that greeny color. And then the letters will be white. Oh, so you're going to make them all the same color? Or you're not going to like alternate colors or anything? No, because I went to Hobbycraft and I knew I wanted to do the bunting, but I didn't want to buy too much yarn. Mm-hmm. I just bought, it was three for two. Oh. So I bought two of the green and one of the mm-hmm. white. But originally I was doing it so that I was doing it in half double crochets so that every one little block mm-hmm. was two half double mm-hmm. crochets and that kind of was square. Mm-hmm. And then it was it was just huge and I was like, this is going to take forever. <laughs> so I ripped, I ripped it out. I was like partway through the M. And so now I'm just doing of one single crochet is one block. Well, yeah. You can tell yeah, it's an M, right? When you pull it out, it's like, why is she making an M? <laughs> and then I looked at the shape, like, oh, it's bunting. Very nice. Yeah, Very cute. You can, like, wrap oh, it around the tree if you had a tree. I have a tree. You have a tree? A real tree. You didn't tell me you got a tree. We got it on Thursday, and we decorated it today. Oh, nice. Oh, that's what we did today. Uh, we decorated a Christmas tree. And we got <laughs> presents. Right. Do you have any whips? Yes. Actually, I have two, but I'm only going to talk about one because the other one I left downstairs and it's just a small little thing. I don't need to talk about it. But I finished the sleeves for my Maxfield mm-hmm. and I'm on the body. And I haven't gotten too far on the body because I was working on other things. It's definitely going a lot slower than, than my other sweater because I'm actually home and I actually have to do stuff around the house. And <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, I'm I'm happy with it. Hmm, it looks awesome. The 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 blah, 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 nope words. I just cannot do words today. <laughs> the blue is very electric looking. Is it? It's not. The, I don't think it's as bright as. I guess it, it is bright, especially compared to the grays. Hmm. And I li- like that it's not all blue. It's got the other colors mixed in with it. So mm-hmm. yeah, so that's my main whip because I finished a bunch of little things. So I'm hoping to finish it by Edinburgh. I'll, we'll see. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I'm done no, by then. Wear it. Don't you wear are all. Two sweaters I could wear. Well, you can wear them both on different days. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. So that's all the whips. You have any FOs? I do. I feel like I don't have anything really exciting to talk about. But it's my Linen Loops oh, nice. Infinity Scarf. So I did decide to do it. Because like, once I made it all, I couldn't decide if I wanted to keep it as a scarf. 
or actually mm-hmm. sew it together as an infinity mm-hmm. scarf. Mm-hmm. So it's a bit on the long side, so I can get it around my neck three times. Oh. So you can have it really cozy if you want it, or just... Yeah, but it, I think that's all right, because it's... Is it fingering weight? It's just, like, lace... Yeah, it's it's very mm-hmm. drapey and lacy, and it's quite narrow mm-hmm. as well, that having it three times around your neck really doesn't create a lot of bulk, mm-hmm. extra mm-hmm. bulk. But yeah, so I did the thing, I blocked it, and then decided if it was long enough. I'm trying to think, I might have pulled out... No. Did I pull out some of it? I don't think I did in the end. I think I just ended it and sewed it together. So this was the one that you made up on, made up as you went, right? Was that the one that you made? No, I I, I pattern? got a pattern oh, for this. Okay. I can't remember. Yeah, um, the pat. I mean, it's called linen loops because it's the pattern oh, was made linen. for a linen. Okay, that's why it's called linen loops. Yarn. Yeah. I don't know. It's very simple pattern or stitch. It's just one stitch, which I guess because it's paid for pattern, can't say what it was. <laughs> but it <was> really <laughs> simple. It's sort of one of those things where it's like, why did I pay for this? <laughs> Because somebody else thought of it before you. That's why. <laughs> uh, that that that's a co- pretty color, pretty purple. It'll go with just about anything, mm. except for maybe your red yeah. jacket. Do you have your red jacket with you? Can't remember. Um, my red down jacket. I broke it out this uh-huh. week. I wore it to work yesterday. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Because it was like basically hovering just above freezing. I think was the high oh. yesterday. Yeah, it's been pretty mild here, except for today. Today is actually snowing. Snow. Yeah, it's the first snow of the season. Madeline's very excited. And I actually nice. wore our boots this morning when we went to the store. It was crazy. People were like... <laughs> snow boots? I wore snow boots, but it, there wasn't any snow in the ground. It was just... It's easy to just slip them on and, you know, no zippers, no ties. Just mm. slip and they're just warm. They are warm. So I wore those today. I was very happy. Your dad is, like, grumbling. Like, it is December. It's supposed... It's winter i mean he grumbles whenever it starts getting cold and i keep reminding him we live in new england it's supposed to get cold in the fall <laughs> and now it's, it's supposed to get even colder in the winter time yep california boy so what is what are your efforts? i made <laughs> three of these quadratic caps one two three so just it is like a beanie. Yep. I made them for my dad because I've never made him anything. But only two of them. Two of them for, for him. and Because he has a black oh. and white or black and red down jacket. Oh, good with it. I don't know. Maybe these two. I'll give this one to Danny. So you got a light gray and red one, a red and dark gray one, and a dark gray and light gray? Yep. It's a valley yarn, cold rain. It's merino and nylon. I can't remember exactly. I, didn't. I forgot to write the thing down. But... I went to Webs a couple of weeks ago, so I bought the three, the three yarns for this. And then I, I was, I had enough yarn left over to make a fourth hat. I don't have that hat anymore, but I did put a picture in the notes. It's just a mm-hmm. random fair isle pattern that I kind of mess around with. I'm sending that to mm-hmm. somebody that's in the army that lives in South Korea. Did I tell you about her? No. So on the way back from China, I was on an airplane with this young, young woman. Well, she's little, she's older than you. Her her, she's got kids, and she's from Virginia. She's never been out of the country before. She's in the army. She's stationed in South Korea. Mm-hmm. She's three kids. So was she on her way to South Korea? No, she was on her way home. She'd been mm. away from her family for I don't know how many months. I forget. And her youngest was only two. Mm-hmm. And so we were talking a bit, and I felt so bad for her because she said. She's going home, and she's, she'll be able to spend Halloween with her kids. And it's the, her, her baby's first Halloween that he'll, he actually will remember mm-hmm. or that he could actually participate in because, you know, he's two rather than just one. So she was excited about that, and I asked her about the holidays. She's like, no, I'm going to be in Korea by myself over the holidays, oh, and uh-huh. I felt bad for her. So she showed some interest in my knitting, and she's like, I've always wanted to learn. So I put together a little learn-to-knit kit for her. I made the hat, yeah. and I just sent it off. So, yeah, she gave me her address. So what what did, what else did you include in the Learn to Knit kit? I bought some Vanna White Van, uh, yarn, mm-hmm. Lions brand, uh, mm-hmm. a, a gray one and a blue one, and I bought some a book, a booklet. Mm-hmm. It's a How to Knit book, and mm-hmm. a little packet of like a starter kit it has it has a measuring tape it's got stitch markers it's got i don't know what else it has i think it has a uh, a needle gauge a bunch of little things in a little packet i bought that and, and i threw in some of my bamboo needles that i don't use anymore 
you know, I mm-hmm. figured I, you know, there's no reason why I should buy it for her when I have plenty of needles that I don't use. Mm-hmm. So, and some goodies. I sent her some maple syrup from New Hampshire mm-hmm. and uh, some maple candy. So, yeah, there's the package. I sent Aren't her. you just sweet? I just, I, my, my heart just broke for her when she was like, she's never been, like, not only is, is she going to be away from her family for so long, but she's never been out of the country. Mm. So, yeah. And she's a little country girl. Like, oh, that must be culture shock for her to be living in, mm. in Korea. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So a little something from home. Nice. Yep. So I'm looking at the hat that you made for her. Uh-huh. And then the pattern that you fudged around with. And it's nothing. <laughs> nothing alike. What? I fudged? I didn't, I didn't yeah. post the pattern. Did I post the pattern? Kodiak Kisses? Oh, no. That's this. That's, that's another hat I made. <laughs> oh, I was going to say. That's like... <laughs> So, right, because the hat you made for her is like a Fair Isle. Yeah, like, I just, it was just, it's the same, flower shapes. it's the same number of stitches as the quadratic hat, except I didn't I make it as long, so it's not as slouchy, and mm-hmm. I just, I have a book of Fair Isle charts, so I just kind of right. did two charts together and added I colors see. and stuff like that, so. Also, why is the quadratic cap called the quadratic cap? I don't know, because it's like a... It's like a grid. I don't know why it's called a quadratic cap. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry. Let's see, let's see if, it, if it's explained in the pattern. And it's a free pattern that I got years ago. I've made this hat before. So. Uh, it is a very, like, manly hat. Not manly, but, like, good looks like a good man's uh-huh. hat. Beanie. It doesn't explain why she calls it a quadratic hat, cap, but it's it's almost like it's um tartan on a bias, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like a, a plaid. Yeah, That's the word of. I'm looking for. A plaid on a bias. Yeah. So, so okay. Kodiak kisses. Oh, that's another hat you made then. <laughs> I see. Oh my god, you made so many hats. I think it's a fairly new pattern uh-huh. and it's got polar bears on it. You see? Oh, there we go. Like a mama mm-hmm. bear and a baby bear. Oh, that's cute. Are they polar bears or are they grizzly bears? Call it polar bear if it's white. <laughs> and then I made the top part a little different. Yes. I did, did like a little star on it instead of it having faded to the white. Yeah. Uh, so I don't uh-huh. really like the hat because of the yarn I used. It yeah. was just what it, leftover hat for leftover yarn from something else, and because it's mostly acrylic, it you know even though I blocked it and everything, it still doesn't look right. It still looks kind of lumpy. It's, I think it's just the nature of the yarn. Have you made another hat? Yeah, with that the split, blue the split back. acrylic yarn. Split in the back oh. with stars. Did that hat yeah, turn that out okay? Yeah, that okay. I think maybe it's yeah. because of the way it's stranded or something. I'm not sure. But I ordered more yarn mm. to make this because I bought this pattern for Madeline because she loves polar bears. And Knit Picks has a new yarn line that's all natural color. So there's a gray and like, there's different kinds of grays. And it's, all, it's all natural sheep colors. So it's not dyed at all. Like a, So mm-hmm. a dark gray and a... Oh, like almost a white. So I'm going to make that for Madeline later on. Uh, so this was, I guess I'll just donate this to something. Because there's, they're always looking for donations this time of year anyway. Mm-hmm. It, it is, is very cute. cute. Little polar bears. Yeah, I just trees. don't like uh, yarn. You know, mm-hmm. well, at least at least it's washable. So if I donate it to somewhere, there, I think there is um, one of those mitten trees in the library where you, mm-hmm. you know, hang mittens and hats on it and leave for yeah. for donations. So I just have to um, weave in the ends and then I'm done. So I'll take some pictures. Mm-hmm. And those are my FO. So I, yeah, I, I made a lot of hats. One, two, three, four, five hats. Yeah, hats, that's hats, why hats, I hats, haven't hats. been working on my sweater as much. So yeah, those are my mm-hmm. FOs. Any yarding bits and bobs? I got a book. So Sam's mom hadn't bought me a birthday present. So when they were here, she was like, what do you want? And so I said, well, I always want books. <laughs> <laughs> so I got her to get me Step Into Crochet, the Ron Strong book that a lot of other podcasters have been talking about. Faye from the Crochet uh-huh. Circle did a really good review of it. And somebody else had just bought it as well. I can't remember who it was now. I don't know. But yeah, so I keep saying I want to make a so sock. So is it all socks? Well, two socks. I want to make at least two socks. Yeah. 
It's crocheted sock techniques from basic to beyond. 18 patterns. I don't know. Well, like the whole idea is just really learning how to crochet mm-hmm. socks that fit. So there's like a bit at the beginning about measuring all your foot measurements, foot circumference, ankle circumference, gusset circumference, foot length, leg circumference, heel diagonal, and mm-hmm. toe length. A uh, question. When you're doing the foot circumference around the balls of your feet, yeah, should it be straight? <laughs> Is that stupid? Yeah, why wouldn't it be straight? I don't know, because it's like, it's basically mm-hmm. like the widest part of your foot, right? But the widest part of my foot, basically, I'd be measuring it part way around my little toe. I don't know. I mean, socks are stretchy, are very forgiving. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, but yeah, so it talks about that. And, oh, I laughed at your ankle circumference tends to be larger than your foot circumference. <laughs> <laughs> no way. I have wide feet. I'm like, I thought I read that wrong because I, like, I did my measurements and then I, was, I read it and I was like, what? No, it's not. I was like, all oh, right. I guess for normal people because we, we come from a family of wide feet. Not, not only wide feet, but a lot of us have bunions too that add to the wide feet. So, yeah, there's yeah. no way. I don't, if our I don't ankles have were wider than our foot, then we would have cankles. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just going to measure it real quick for a second. So, I like, can't remember what it was. My foot circumference is about eight and a half. Mm hmm. And my ankle circumference is uh, eight. Hmm, um, that's interesting. I suppose I should measure mine. <laughs> Good Lord. My big giant wide feet. Holy cow. My wide feet are... <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Go on. And the, I'm, I'm a very uh, short person too. They're about 10 inches. I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing at you. <laughs> Almost ten inches. They're like, oh, Jesus Christ. They're very wide. I have like I I have um Fred Flintstone's feet. <laughs> and my ankle, like where your ankle bone is, just uh, your the I, smallest part of your ankle. Yeah, I did it right above the ankle bone. Is that right? It I wasn't guess. actually. It's about eight inches. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> but yeah, because then it, it suggests like then you should be making if you there's a big difference to make the foot measurements to one size and the leg Uh, measurements to a different size. I mean, even though like your dad's feet are not as wide as mine, they're still considered wide Mm -hmm. for the leg part. I just do um, ribbing all the way down to the, down the leg just, just to make it easier because he's got skinny little legs. Oh, I see. But yeah, so it goes, it goes on to talk about each of the measurements and how you adjust the pattern depending on the proportions of your feet. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it does a lot of that. And then bits about the he- different types of heels, anatomy of sock construction. I wonder if patterns. um, knit socks are just easier than crochet socks. Might be. Yeah, like I think he does. It's got some patterns that are. Yeah, so the first four patterns are well, one sock cuff down, the same sock toe up, and then a different sock cuff down, and that same mm-hmm. sock toe up, and then other different patterns. But yeah, are they definitely like. They just, they don't, I don't know, obviously, they don't look as comfortable <laughs> as as knitted socks. socks because you can, you can see the, like, texture of the uh-huh. stitches. Mm-hmm. It's not as flat. And so I wonder if, like, stepping on that. So then maybe they're more like house socks than mm, shoe like socks? Almost like sl- yeah, like slipper socks sort of things. I don't know. But well, I like the colors of the book. The colors of the book? You know, like the outside, the, the, the cover. I like the cut. Co- color hmm but um so i have i have some sock yarn i i you sent daddy with some yarn for me Mm -hmm. so i had you buy get acquire for me (laughs) some yarn the tweedy one right it was tweedy yeah it was like a a green tweed nitpick uh-huh. stroll tweed lost like heather because uh-huh. that seems like a manly color i can make socks for sam but i might i still haven't made him anything but you i've need fought to make figure... yourself socks before you make oh no no socks. i'm gonna make me myself socks <laughs> Cause, first cause not got because they're feet. gonna be crap well not just that but like i'm sure like my first pair will be crappy and 
want to give him a okay <laughs> yeah i agree <laughs> no and then you're gonna say your second pair will be crappy too <laughs> no i was gonna say you got my first pair of socks <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah i've not made him anything so i keep saying like i'll make you a scarf but every time i go out to look for yarn like he doesn't want anything too woolly because he Scratchy. has a lot of stubble uh, well, no, because then it gets stuck in his <laughs> stubble. You know, like he doesn't want to have fluff in his on his face. So you have so, to call Mister Fluffy Beard. Yeah. So, like, if you had an actual beard, that probably wouldn't be a problem. But when you've got like stubble, stubble, yeah, it's like Velcro. Yeah. Yeah. He's exactly. Vel- Velcro so, face. So he doesn't want anything too 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 woolly, mm-hmm. too too fluffy. So I'll probably look for something that's anyway. But then whenever I go out, it's like. Between can't be too woolly, fluffy, but also mm-hmm. like good colors. Mm-hmm. I c- haven't found anything yet. But yes, so sorry. What were we even talking about? That was my yarny bits and bobs. Oh. <laughs> what about you? I went to Webb's a couple weeks ago, right before uh-huh. Thanksgiving, uh-huh. with a bunch of friends. Well, a bunch. There were four of us. We made a road trip. And two of, <laughs> two of us have never been to Webb's, and the other two have been there before, so... It was a lot of fun. I didn't go too crazy at Webb's because, you know, I already have a lot of yarn. <laughs> I have too much yarn. So I went to Webb's and I was like, oh, what, what kind of yarn do you want? And you you just like surprised me. So they had some hand dyed, it's called Heritage Paint, Silk Paints. It's um, 85% merino superwash and 15% silk. I got you this. It's, it, it's more... Ooh more fuchsia y purple than purple than violet purple. But in, in the mm-hmm. screen it looks very more blue than pink. You know? It's more pink. So I got you this. But if you don't like that, I got I got another one. <laughs> 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 so you can pick from these two. So this one's definitely blue. Uh it's mm-hmm. like it has a little bit of green in it, a little bit of blue in it. But mostly blue. But I thought you would like this pink, pinky purple one. Yeah, it's nice. And I got you this. Keep calm and carry yarn. <laughs> it's a mug. Yes, it's a mug that says keep calm and carry yarn. And I could. Did, did you get one for yourself? No, as well? they only had one. So I got that one. Oh. I couldn't. My friends were like, you can't let that sit there. You have to buy it. So <laughs> they only had one left. So that. So I got. And I got the, the hat yarn that I made the quadratic hat with. Hats with. Mm-hmm. That day also, and some other purple yarn that I'm making a stuffy for Madeline. So we were walking around. Well, not we were walking around. We were driving around looking for a place to eat after we were at Webb's because we were there for hours. And I mean, we could, you could spend all day there. I put some pictures <laughs> of Webb's. It's got, you know, the store part is pretty big. And then it's got a warehouse part where they have their own um, house brand, Valley Yarns, and also... Um, all their clearance and, um, you know, the, the big sale stuff uh, they have mm-hmm. in the in the, um, in the warehouse part. And I, we were talking to one of the ladies there. It's like, oh, yeah, the store, they only sell like 20% of their, uh, 20% of their sales is from in-store. The rest is, is online. So they've got like mm-hmm. another mm-hmm. warehouse. So we had a lot of fun. I definitely did not spend the most out of the four of us. So we were looking <laughs> for a place to eat. So we went to this this little little uh, Italian place, and we saw Benjamin Bratt. Did I tell you this? Yeah, you sent me a picture. Oh, no, wait. I don't know. Paula posted it uh, on yeah. Instagram or something. We saw Benjamin Bratt, and he was eating lunch with his wife. And she's gorgeous. <laughs> Benjamin Bratt, for people <laughs> don't know, he was in Law & Order, Miss Congeniality. He's in the new Coco the Pixar movie, Coco. Uh, He's the uh-huh, voice yeah. of the, the main dead guy. The main character? Yeah, not the main character. The main, the main character is a little boy, but the second character. Oh, so yeah. anyway, yeah, yeah. yeah, he's a very, he's a good looking dude. He's, um, he definitely looks older <laughs> in person because, you know, no makeup, but he's really skinny. It's uh-huh. like he's tall and skinny. He's almost like skeletal. <laughs> but yeah, he's good looking. And we were all giggly. We didn't, we didn't approach them or anything. <laughs> <laughs> We're too shy and too embarrassed, and 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 they were like, you know, they're they're trying, they're having lunch, you know, we'll just leave mm-hmm. them alone. So yeah. we didn't go and say hello, but we were all, we were all very. Were you close enough that they could hear you giggling? They could probably or were they hear far enough us that... giggling, and they probably knew that we were giggling because of that. <laughs> oh, but they left, 
And when they left the, the restaurant, they walked towards a corner and then they changed their mind and started walking back to the restaurant. And that was when Paolo took the picture of them walking back towards the <laughs> restaurant. So apparently, so we're, of course, I'm like looking at IMDb because I don't know anything about who he's married to. I mean, I know. Mm-hmm. So, um, and we looked it up. She's the orig- well, she grew up in Massachusetts. So we figured, well, maybe they have family here. And it was right before Thanksgiving. And, you know, but the, the, mm-hmm. the waitress said, oh, yeah, they come here quite often. So maybe they live there. The kid, I know they have kids. But anyway, that was our, our little <laughs> bit of excitement on our trip to Wes. But as we were driving around looking for a place to eat or a place to park, we found there's another yarn store in Northampton that I, I didn't know there was a, a, a yarn store in downtown Northampton. Mm. I've been going there for how many years now? Because uh-huh. I just usually just go to webs and leave. <laughs> we don't go anywhere else. <laughs> but the store is called Northampton Wools, and they've been there. They've definitely been there longer than than webs. Uh, it's a cute little shop. Oh. I met the owner, Linda Daniels, and she was very friendly. It's like very warm and homey. They had a lot of samples, and there was uh, where the customer was saying, "Oh yeah, it's like it's like." This is her living room, and she invites us into their living room, <laughs> into her living room. Aww. So it was really nice. But they had, she had one thing that was particularly special. She has this wall of, there's like bags. We're like, are they orders? We couldn't figure out what they were. But she repairs sweaters for people, for knitters or non knitters, like store bought sweaters or whatever. They people just bring yeah. their sweaters, and she repairs them, and then they pay her for it. So like, oh, that's that's yeah. a great service. Like. Like what? Like moth holes? Yeah, or whatever. Rips. Rips. Mm. Sweaters. Interesting. Yeah, so that's like, wow, that's that's a great little niche. <laughs> so it was a cute little shop. I didn't buy any yarn there, but I did buy this. More mugs. <laughs> <laughs> so they didn't have that much left. I like the buttons on the sides. Uh, this was the only uh-huh. blue one. This this one is all, you know, pearl stitches. And um, uh-huh. one of my other friends got the one that's knit stitches. But that one was uh-huh. yellow, and I was like, "Well, I want the blue one anyway." So she got the yellow, uh, uh-huh. yellow knit stitch one. And I got the pearl stitch, and I was looking. Are those handmade? Then? They are handmade, and there's a, a a signature on the bottom, and it says Charon or Karen Saker. Saker. It's an Indian name, mm-hmm. I'm assuming. But I looked him up, and he has an Etsy shop called Creative with Clay, and he has some beautiful pottery things dishes and mugs Mm -hmm. and and a lot of them have knit motifs on them so yeah check out his etsy shop it's really cool i mean i he i think he does a lot of shows wherever he's local you know craft shows and Uh stuff like that but yeah i i have seen Mm -hmm. these mugs before at other yarn stores but i've never seen a blue Mm -hmm. one so um Uh once i when i saw the blue one i had to get you know you know me i had to get the blue one (laughs) apparently he he's based out of seattle Uh uh-huh doesn't he have some pretty things? Yeah. Cool. Yep. Yeah, so that's my um, yarny bits and bobs. Hmm. Sorry. Now I'm just looking at his <laughs> So on the subject of yarny bits and bobs and on the subject of that yarn you bought me, it's purple. What's purple? <laughs> the yarn you bought me. What yarn I bought you? The yarn you bought me from when? Oh, just now? Yeah, it's, it's purple. It's purple, but it's like a more pinky purple. Yeah, it's not, it's not the right purple. But I was going to say... We're gonna host another. Oh yes! <laughs> oh my god! Try, I tried. I tried to have like a super smooth segue, like "Ooh, look, purple yarny things," and you just wouldn't play. <laughs> I'm sorry, bad podcaster. Bad podcaster. <laughs> anyway, we are hosting a, I guess a winter, a winter cow. Yep, after the holidays. After after the holidays, so this is your. Advanced notice, guys. So the theme of the cow is the Pantone color of the year, which they just announced the other day. Ultraviolet. And do you want to... Ultraviolet is the color. I had to explain what Pantone was to um, Sam today. Oh, I don't know that your dad would know what it is. I'm not even sure. Yeah, I no, know there's not. <laughs> they're just a... They're, they, they're a color organization. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it it it's based on like particularly the like for graphics the problem of how do you match colors. Mm-hmm. Um, we use them at work. We have a Pantone color book at work, mm-hmm. so 
it, we can pick a color and say like we want to make a blanket in this mm-hmm. color and then we can tell a supplier in wherever mm-hmm. china india this is the color and if they have the pantone color book they can match it to that exact color or close to that color at least so yeah the ultraviolet it is it's not like it's it, it's it's like a purple it's just like straight up purple <laughs> yep i don't know like the name of it makes me think like it would be a, a way like lighter like a bright bright or like neon mm-hmm. almost like i don't really know if you can have a neon purple but the statement says that it's a blue based purple and we are living in a time that requires inventiveness and imagination it is this kind of creative inspiration that is indigenous to pantone 18-3838 ultraviolet <laughs> blue base purple that takes our awareness and potential to a higher level from exploring new technologies in the greater galaxy to artistic expression and spiritual reflection intuitive ultraviolet lights the way to what is yet to come so so yeah so we're going to be hosting a cal and basically make something ultraviolet <laughs> yeah yeah that's so it's a, easy it's a enough free for all basically <laughs> mm-hmm mm-hmm <laughs> We won't be mad if it isn't exactly ultraviolet. <laughs> <laughs> or if it's pinky purple. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but we're very organized and we haven't even decided what day we're doing it yet. Um, shall we say to start on January 15th? A Monday? Sure. And then at, at that point, we, we would at least have our first January episode out. We'll, have, we'll be a little bit more organized. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So maybe January 15th to March? The end of February? March 1st. March 15th? March 1st? 15th. March 1st is a Thursday. Okay. March 1st. Yeah. Month and a half. Right. Decided. <laughs> this, is, this is how things work on this podcast. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> purple. Oh boy! Right. I was actually I was at um ginger the ginger twist. Uh, uh-huh. I love your shop. little card that you gave me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, and they they had a they had a yarn there that was quite ultraviolet. Uh-huh. I, I didn't buy it though because I was like I should probably figure out what I want to make first. <laughs> uh, yeah, that would uh, probably be the smart move. Yeah, probably something not too ambitious because otherwise I won't finish. In a month and a half. Yeah. yeah. What we can do, I want to hear you try to read more of this. <laughs> <laughs> no, you read it. You're around Scot- Scottish people all day. So what about Sam? Be Maybe Sam can make a special appearance. <laughs> you want to read some Scots? <laughs> he says no. <laughs> I just... <laughs> <laughs> this one, this one. Snipes referee-in? He splutered through a gumfu o <laughs> Snipe? They call him Snipe? So I think that's Snape's, Snape's refereeing. He sputtered through a something of something. <laughs> must be food. He must have been eating. A gumfu o glower. <laughs> You have to spell that for me. <laughs> G U B F U O G L A U R. Okay. Gubfu o Glower. I'm sure, I'm, I'm sure I must be pronouncing it absolutely 100% right. I just don't know what it means. <laughs> oh, we saw Justice League. Superman was in it for like two minutes. Uh, so I wasn't happy about that. Hmm. Oh yeah, we were talking. Was it, we were talking about Justice League in the last episode, and then we were talking about the the outfits, the Amazon. It hadn't it hadn't it hadn't premiered yet. We we're talking about the outfits, but yeah, the the Amazon outfits definitely were skimpier in Justice League. But you, they were only yeah. on screen for like two minutes. They, they, so right. if you didn't yeah. mention it, I wouldn't have even noticed it. You know? Yeah, because they were hardly even in the movie. Oh wait, one last thing yeah. to talk about. I don't know if it's really relevant, but I was on an Instagram. These ornaments that I got from Hobbycraft, they're like a wire frame. It's a star. Mm-hmm. So I was like, this is really cute. I'm going to wrap it in yarn. This is taking forever. Because <laughs> it's like, you know. Why don't you just wrap the outside? Are you what? like intertwining no, it's, it? No, it's so each. No, each spoke. Are you like weaving it in? 
is wrapped in a sing- in a color. Uh-huh. Each like Ow! bit of wire. <laughs> so I've I've got yarn everywhere uh-huh. because it's in some places like I've wrapped it around the end, but in other places I don't. So I'm gonna have to like uh-huh. I have like a hot glue gun. I can maybe hot glue it down on the insides. No, so I'm like just literally it, wrapping like it, was, it around the metal, you know, like it but the metal is slippery, so it's like wrap, 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 and then I'm like, blah, blah, blah. Um, so I'm just going to do one side, because I can't be bothered to do the other. Um, <laughs> well, um, if you have some sandpaper, uh, you can sandpaper yeah. it, so it'll be really Too rough. late. I'm, I'm more than halfway done, but I bought another one. That it's like a diamond shaped, and um, yeah, I was going to wrap that one, but... I decided not to. So now I've, I bought some pom pom makers. Oh, I didn't buy yarn at the yarn store. I bought oh, the uh-huh. little, the the two like little sizes. So I just made four of the uh-huh. little pom poms and like put it inside the diamond. So they're just like, yeah. Can you go? Out? Sorry, putting them to work. I might make another one though because there's four in it, so it looks like that. Oh, <laughs> that's cute. Are you gonna hang that on your tree? Yeah, it was hanging on the tree. I made him take it off for a second. But yeah. Okay. Now we can be done. Sorry, that was really random. <laughs> right so you can find the show notes for this episode and every episode on our website kcacy podcast.wordpress.com that's kcacy as in keep calm and carry yarn you can follow us on instagram kcacy podcast and you can join our ravelry group which is just keep calm and carry yarn podcast or something like that just search it in the groups tab um <laughs> we'll have um a thread for this episode so you can leave us comments or whatever and we also have a thread for we have a thread for the buzzfeed quizzes which has been a bit quiet as of late but i guess this episode we kind of spoiled all the answers so if you wanted to take the quiz <laughs> uh, we just gave you all the answers so sorry about that <laughs> <laughs> and then lastly just rate review subscribe thumbs up all the fun stuff on itunes and youtube and whatever uh okay i'm done Thank you for listening. And remember to keep calm and carry on. <laughs>